any heretic, wolf, false teacher, false prophet, worth his weight, will do this. If you come across a false teacher, if you come across someone who's a false prophet, come across a heretic, and let's just be clear, guys, there are false teachers, there are heretics, there are people out there who have evil intentions out there with designs on you. Remember, the Bible says, Peter tells us that Satan walks around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. How is he going to do that? Well, recall his most favorite way of doing it. We see it in the garden when he goes to Eve in Genesis 3. He says a couple of things. One, he says, did God say? So what he's going to do is obviously he's going to impugn the scriptures. Do the scriptures really say that? But then the second thing that he does, and you'll see this amongst a lot of heretics, a lot of false teachers in church, he's going to twist what we know the scriptures say, which is this is what the scriptures really mean. This is what God really mean. And in doing so, it does something to your heart or more specifically to your eyes. The Bible says that Eve saw that the fruit was desirous. And so what did she do? She went and ate. Even when Satan goes to Jesus, what does he do? In Matthew 4, 6, he says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. The point is every false prophet, every false teacher, every person who is has designs on using the scriptures or using the Bible as a means for gain, as Paul says, they're going to do just what Satan did, which is what? Use the scriptures. The scriptures that he used are actually in the Bible, meaning they're going to open the Bible. They're going to quote the scriptures. However, they're going to twist them. He does so for his own gain, and he does it towards Jesus. If he's going to use the word against Jesus, what will he do towards you? Some will say the people that we call or that we know to be false teachers or heretics, they can't be. Why? Because they use the Bible. They preach the scriptures. They lead people to Christ. So the question is, will someone ever who's a false teacher ever have someone who's listening to them? Will they ever come to Christ? Well, the fact of the matter is, guys, yes, people have come to Christ. People have placed their faith in Christ even while or at the hands of a false teacher. I'm going to show you that in a second, but they don't know that the person they're listening to is a false teacher to begin with. As a matter of fact, their hearts, their minds are open, not because of the false teacher, but because of God. They just happen to be in the wrong area. I'm going to show you what God does, but let's make sure that we know that the devil is not coming at us as though he's not a false teacher. The devil is not going to come at us with a sign that says, I'm the devil or a false teacher is going to say, I'm a false teacher. I'm a wolf. I'm a heretic. No, that's not what he's going to do. As a matter of fact, he's going to come and appear as though he is a legitimate preacher of the gospel. He is going to come as though he is light. Why do we say that? Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, let's start in verse 12. He says, but what I am doing, I will continue to do so that I might cut off the opportunity for those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the matter about which they are boasting. And so Paul is saying that I'm going to come against anyone or anything that is that is distorting or twisting the word of God. But look what he says here. Verse 13, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. So clearly we are going to find people who say that they are sent by God, who are apostles, uh, they're, matter of fact, even using that very term apostles or just prophet or anyone who's bringing a false gospel, they're going to tell you and lead you to believe that they are from Christ. Look what Paul says, though. He says, no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deed. Now, he's warning the believers, he's warning the body and even people who will be potentially part of the body that these people are going to come. And so we have to make sure that we warn the body of that. But what happens, though, if you happen to find yourself or if you don't even realize it, if a person is under the leadership or in a service, in a church, in a body, a denomination that is led by a heretic, a wolf? Again, even Jesus himself says that these wolves are going to come. These false prophets are going to come. And so it should come as no surprise that they have come and that they hear and that they will keep coming. But what happens when you find yourself happening to listen to one of them? Is it possible that a person can become a Christian? Is it possible that you can even hear the gospel? Sounds strange, but is it possible that you can even hear the gospel 
while being under one of these people? Well, sure it is. In Philippians 1.15, speaking about giving the gospel, he says, some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife, but some also from goodwill. In other words, there are some that do it for the right motives, some for the wrong motives. He says, the latter do it out of love. Those that do it out of, for the good, for the right reasons. He says, the latter do it out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, selfish ambition, rather than from pure motives, thinking to cause my distress, cause me distress in my imprisonment. What then? Only in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this, I rejoice. Paul's point is, there are going to be some folks who are going to say or speak about Christ. Some do it for selfish reasons. Some do it for pure love, for the right motivation. But you know what? At the very least, at least Christ be preached. That sounds pretty strange, though, until we recall what Paul said in Romans. In Romans 10 17, he makes a statement that says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of Christ. This passage is a little bit misleading for some people. Let's go back and look at the word hearing. When we see the word in English, hearing, we think because it has an I-N-G on it, that it's a, a verb, an action, but it's not. This is actually a noun. The word for hearing is not a verb, but it is a noun. It is the word from the Greek word, akaes, which means, it means a hearing, it means a sound, it means a report. What this is, is a report. Faith comes by a report, by the report of the gospel, what was happening. You need to know that there is power, not in the preacher, but in the preached word. There's power in the gospel, not in the messenger, but in the message. For further proof of that, let's look what Paul says in chapter one of Romans, verse 16. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. So it is the power of what's happened on the cross. Hard to explain unless you experience it. The power of the gospel, it is what causes us to believe. It's not how well someone preaches. It, it's not even how well uh, someone sings. It's not the motives. It's not the intention. Someone may have false motives bad intentions in preaching the gospel, but it's the gospel that saves. It's the message. It's the power that emanates from that into us. And so that is the main thing. And so it's possible that a person can be under, for example, Jim Jones, the first megachurch pastor in America who did preach out of the Bible, who did speak about Jesus and people did place their faith in Christ, but he was clearly an evil person, a wolf, a heretic of all heretics. But how is it that people became Christians, became believers after listening to him? Because it wasn't him. It was the words of, the, it was the message. It was the gospel. And what happened, thankfully, a large portion of them, most of them, as a matter of fact, left his teaching. Why? Because the Holy Spirit in them began to resonate and let them understand that and know that this guy is not seemingly in leagues with what he's preaching. His gospel is off. And so for the, the vast majority of them left him. Now, 900 people did follow them and die, but a lot of people did leave them. There's been other well-known false teachers in the history of the world who preached out of the Bible, Joseph Smith, for example, who brings up another uh, testimony, which is the Book of Mormon. But there are people in who were in the Mormon church who placed their faith in Christ, not really knowing what they believe but because they place their faith in Christ, they have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to alert them, to show them that because they also have a love of the scriptures, they go back and research the scriptures themselves and they see like a true Berean, this is not the gospel. And what do they do? Thank God that I've heard for myself and I have left this because they have appreciation for one, who God is and two, for his word. There are many people who've come out of and who have left the word of faith movement, who have left some of these heretical teachings behind, realizing it's not them, but the word of God that's more important. And so can a heretic, can a wolf, can a false teacher, you name it, can these people, these deceptive men or women, can they, will they preach the gospel? Will people actually listen to them and get closer to Christ or come to Christ? Yes. Again, it's not them. It is the power of God. And that doesn't mean that because they said something nice that we should stay with them. 
No. Remember, the Bible says, Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, that the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine. And what will they do? They will go to people to, to give them, to preach to them what they want to hear. That is certainly happening today. But because they do so and they throw Jesus in the middle of it, if they open the Bible and preach and then in turn twist the words while they're, while they're doing that, because they see this, as Paul says, as a means for gain, does not mean that they are not going to have their own sort of judgment. That's just the facts. And so if you find yourself with someone who is preaching something that is different from the gospel, even if you think that person has a good intent, even if you feel like that that person has led other people to Christ, which who knows, whatever you think, if what they're doing is being shown to not line up with the gospel, then it is up to you to do your due diligence, one study, but also to then leave. You're not beholden to them. You are beholden to the word of God and you're beholden to Christ. So I hope this helps with anyone having this question, having this understanding or wanting to have an understanding. Can someone who preaches actual gospel, can they actually be a bad person? They absolutely can. Again, Satan does disguise himself as an angel of light.